Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the short tafsir of Surah Al Falaq. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Ul a'uzu bi Rabbi al Falaq. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of Daybreak. We seek refuge in the Lord of Daybreak, which indicates Allah subhanahu wa taala brings out day from the night with light. Falaka means to rip open something and something comes out of it. For example, to tear open a cushion and fluff comes out of it. The rays of morning tears open the darkness of the night. There is a parable of evil with darkness in this surah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings daylight from the darkness of the night, we ask his help to save us from the evil of darkness as well. Min sharri ma khalaq From the evil of that which he created. This means we seek refuge from the harm of your created things. This harm might result from the creation acting out of its nature, not necessarily with the evil intention. For example, suppose you own a garden and if a goat or a cow accidentally gets in, it will naturally graze and chew on the plants causing harm to your garden. But it does not have any evil intention to cause you any harm. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything and is in complete control of the affairs of his creations, so we ask protection from him and him alone. This is a general harm. However, the next three ayats deal with three special types of deadly harms. And from the evil of darkness when it settles. Well, in this ayat, Ghashik is generally referred to as the darkness of night. Can you relate this to the first ayat now? Why did we ask refuge in the Lord of Daybreak? This is the reason. The most evil things like theft, robbery, disco, drugs, etc. in this world generally happens in the night times. This ayat mentions that we seek refuge from the darkness of the night when it settles or gets most dark possible. The word waqab indicates darkening to the point when things become invisible. So we seek refuge from the darkness when it reaches its peak. By this, we also seek protection even from the invisible or hidden attacks of the shayateen jinns and the sorcerers whose discussions are coming up in the next ayat. And from the evil of the blowers in knots. Here, the word nafasat is used, which is such an Arabic word which doesn't have a direct English translation but it means the blowing of air from the mouth like p -p -p, which seems to be spitting but no actual spit or liquid comes out of the mouth. This technique is used by the sorcerers or the black magicians to cause harm. In the contrary, we also do it like reciting Surah Al-Falaq and Nas or any Ruqya and do Nafasa to our hands and rub over our bodies for protection. Even though the words here are feminine plural, but it will protect us from both male and female magicians as well, inshallah. One of the tactics of the magicians is doing nafasa while creating knots of something and hiding out those knots so that the spell becomes very difficult to break. Once, magic was done over Muhammad sallallahu where the hair knots were blown and was hidden in a well. But with the help of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped him to find out the hidden materials and destroy the spell. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as our role model, also taught us how to save ourselves from the spell of such evil black magicians with the help of this surah. The next ayat talks about jealousy, which is the root cause of the problem, why such black magics are actually done. And from the evil of the envier when he envies. This is referring to evil jealousy.
We are generally guilty in Islam when we act upon a guilty conscience. We are not held responsible when a bad thought comes to our mind, as it is a waswasa of the shaitan and we are not liable for that. We are only held accountable when we act in accordance to that bad idea. However, hasad is a kind of jealousy that grows in the mind and we are responsible even when we let it grow in our heart. We not necessarily need to act upon it, but we need to keep us in check so that we don't let it grow inside us. A person may be jealous and want what another person has. And if he or she desires to achieve that, then it might be permissible in Islam and he or she might not be sinful for this kind of jealousy. But hasad is an evil kind of jealousy that is not just wanting something, what another person has. This is a kind of burning feeling that one feels by thinking, why another person has something that he or she doesn't have? He or she can also feel the same when some other person gets something which he or she is deprived of, like a first prize or a new position in an office. This is not allowed in Islam and is extremely sinful to bear inside one's mind if he or she allows it to grow stronger. This ayat also covers protection from the evil eye. Muhammad warned us mentioning that evil eye is haq or true. So, we can also be harmed by the evil eye or the jealousy itself. The person who is jealous need not physically harm us. That jealousy in of itself can cause invisible harm to our wealth, health, property or even our children. Obviously, this ayat also protects us from the jealous human beings and the jinns or the shayateen who want to harm us and do something to harm us physically or psychologically in this world. This surah primarily deals with worldly harms like physical and psychological harms so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called once in the beginning of this surah. And the next surah that is surah an-nas deals with spiritual harms which principally affects the hereafter and the next life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called thrice in the beginning of that surah as we need more protection of our afterlife and should be more concerned about that as well. And of course, that doesn't mean that we should forget about the affairs of this life, as we always need to make a balance by making the famous dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in the Quran with the blessed mouth of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qin azab nar which translates as O oh our Lord, give us good in this world and also good in the hereafter and protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. Thank you. Hope you like this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Thanks.